not working, but we can hear you. All, All right, right. Uh, this is the Monday Night Men's Forum. I am Matt of Farm Up Life. Tonight we got Scott of Little Pine Farm in Colorado. We have Chicken Whisper down in Florida. We have Jeremy in Alabama, Christopher in Florida, and uh, Mr. Dot Grant Payne. <laughs> um, still didn't edit that from last week. Uh, who's going to piss me off this week? It. Yeah, look, I mean, I apologize for that. Uh huh, uh huh. Thank you. Um, okay, so tonight, fifth. Like uh, five out of six on the collapse now, avoid the rush. This is uh, about communications. So, um, yeah, first we're going to go around, do a quick personal event, something like that happened this weekend or whatever. Uh, Scott, you're first because you're next to me. All right. Um, man, dogs have been going really good this year. Uh, we just got our first two dairy goats a week ago. Nice. And uh, for the new week, I just. Uh, landed a little barter deal to get a truck and trailer to bring fencing up from the city, which is huge. So I'm going to trade this guy half a day's labor for um, something that's saving me like three or 400 bucks to Woo! hire somebody to do it. So, yeah. Sweet. I was going to ask you what uh, Ted Kaczynski memoir or manifesto have you read lately? <laughs> Um, just the one. I've been meaning to start digging into the prison letters, though. <laughs> we should do a whole episode on Ted Kaczynski. <laughs> but I'm not going to do any of the reading. I'll let's just let you fill me in. It's also my Hogwarts character's name, by the way, Theodore Kaczynski. <laughs> <laughs> I did see that screenshot. That was pretty funny. Uh, Chicken Whisperer, go ahead. First time on. Welcome. Yeah, what's going on, guys? Just uh, doing my thing in Florida, you know, love the yeah. chickens, uh, getting ready for what we all kind of see in the background coming, trying to figure it out. I'm actually fixing to think on getting into microgreens and uh, maybe expanding into that environment. I've been studying it a little bit. It's not bad. Uh, it seems to be there's a market. I talked to my little, my little local guys around here. They buy the local produce from folks and they said that they're lacking in resources and the people are always left wanting. So I figured that there's a bit of a hole in the space. So it seems like something I might be putting into uh, more time this year, which wasn't even my plan at all. This is kind of something recent just over the last couple of months. So hopeful there, man. Nice. Cool. Um, I don't know how to work this video, by the way. And like, <laughs> shit, I've clicked all kind of buttons. Ain't got me no fucking where. I'm so sorry, bro. I'm trying. <laughs> I don't understand how to do mine, rather. Uh, yeah. Bullshit. You can just I say that you're, uh, you're in hiding. I heard from, that. At uh, least he's got a cool age. picture. I'm sitting here looking at like a line in my camera. I'm anti me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Whatever. Uh, keep messing with it if you want, but we'll, yeah. we're just going to keep rolling. Uh, Jeremy, go ahead. Uh, event? Is that what we're talking yeah. about? Event? Yeah. Personal event. Yeah, I got COVID. You got COVID right wow. now? Yeah, right now. You look dead. You're terrible. It's, it's <laughs> awful. You already look dead. I, I can see the blood clots coming out of your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the whiskey or the burger. It's, it's got to burn it all. I'll tell you to get the booster. Just, just burn it all out. Just burn it out with the bourbon. Hey, just Jeremy, I don't... In your in your settings, I think uh, your, your microphone is selected to your webcam or something like that, not your $150 microphone. Nice. No. Uh, it was like, like forty yeah. bucks. Your 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 mic sounds terrible. <laughs> I on. wasn't gonna say anything. Oh, is that what that is? I thought he like had a hat sitting in front of him or some shit. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I like, hey, that thing is huge. <laughs> uh, did you get did you get COVID on your work thing last week? Hold on, I can't do two things at one time. How's that? What it's, takes preference? It's no, it still bad. sounds the, still sounds the same. I mean, we can hear you. Just oh shit, it's not plugged in. Of course. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right. Well, he's figuring that out. Uh, Christopher, go ahead. Yeah. Well, uh, we were uh, me and my wife like to go to the uh, local uh, plant uh, plant swap, and there's a uh, my Woo. permaculture dude is there. While we were there, I see this lady's got a, a shirt that says Preppers United, and I said, interesting struck up a conversation she's an older lady and she and her husband there were are had just moved to florida and they have a started a little prepper group around the corner and so i went uh, to their house yesterday looked at all what they're doing with their garden and uh 
uh, was working with them. My, my thoughts this week have been on communications. So I was telling them about a $5 ham radio. Then I brought it over to the house and, and demonstrated it, showed it to them and said, you know, I'll just give it to them because they, uh, they, they look like they're really interested and I, I, I could, you know, five bucks. And so I just gave it to them, but uh, just had a nice long visit with them and, uh, you know, it's an older couple, but they're very uh, hard workers, committed, and just uh, seem like genuinely good people. So that's an excellent contact. And through her, uh, I'll be able to make con- uh, contacts with some other people in our community. So I'm, I'm glad about that. Nice. Is that better? Yeah. That is yeah. so much uh, better. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I was ready to kick you out. Oh, oh man. That's... If you, you change like, your yeah. name to Grant, I'm definitely kicking you out. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there's right. no Grant here. There's only period. Hey. All right. <laughs> COVID got me out of a meeting this week and get me out of this podcast too. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. All right. I was headed there's, to uh, there's Mississippi. The door. <laughs> yep. Uh, no, I was headed to Mississippi Wednesday for my meetings and I got about halfway there and I'd already had like some sinus drainage going on. I got about halfway there and uh, my, my muscles started aching and I thought, son of a bitch, this feels like COVID. Mm. And uh, who knew that loves truck stops carried covid tests and so i pulled over and got a covid test even it was my way out of a meeting Fair so enough. i could take a Fair picture enough. send it send it to them and like sorry guys so i turned around and went back home <laughs> <laughs> yes the covid Didn't test for the before? win it was it you was it before, though, right yeah yeah i've had it once twice yeah. now yeah twice now. this one wasn't as bad as the first one though yeah, uh, like the first time had me laid up in bed for like five days. How uh, many raw eggs have you eaten since then? None. Oh man, gotta be, gotta so here's right, so here's, eggs. but here's the irony of this whole thing. I put out that video, which I took down by the way, but I put out that video of like, well, hey, I haven't had COVID since I. The only time that I had COVID was when I quit eating eggs for like three months, and I, I shit you not, within three days I had COVID. I thought <laughs> that, of that video. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I man. Like, well, debunked that one. <laughs> <laughs> I liked your alien when you did. Just go with them. Oh, yeah, man. I got to yeah. look for that. I haven't been on in a little while. Grant, go ahead. Um, I've had a big week. I got some more bulbs. Um, I practically got engaged, essentially. Um, <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Super fast. I mean, you either did or you didn't. You don't like you didn't I mean, like practically or essentially. Like, okay. You either got your ass one so, or you didn't. <laughs> to us, we are. But to the parents and everybody else, it's a promise ring, because they're like, "Oh, you're too young. It's too soon." Blah blah this. Blah blah uh, that. I'm like, look, I know, I know what I'm doing. And it's how good. old are you, Grant? Never mind. You don't have to answer that. I'll be 22 in April. I was married Listen, at 21. Man, you have no fucking clue what you're doing. Those are terrible words. You're cursing yourself. I just want <laughs> you to know that I love you. I hope you're best. Just, just don't think that. Yeah. No, it's it's all good. Um. So yeah, it, it's great. We went to the pawn shop to get some Glock 17 magazines. Walked out with a ring. <laughs> nice. Dude. Right. Did you get the cool. magazines though? Yeah, I got. So I got the I got the ring. <laughs> Two magazines, and I said, throw in, uh, if, you know, she said she'd do the ring and the two magazines for 240 and I said, throw in another magazine. She oh, saw man. it, and I did nice. it in cash. <laughs> you should have got his dude. and hers Glocks, and then one yeah. is like, asked, like, will you be mine? Like a Valentine, <laughs> like heart candy thing or something. I don't know. You have to shoot yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> Make yes really big and no really small. <laughs> well, I think that's creative, bro. I think that was a cool way to do that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, congratulations, Grant. Thank you. Can't wait to can't wait for the baby to be born in nine months. <laughs> Maybe eight. <laughs> Maybe eight. Maybe eight. eight. <laughs> Maybe we're getting married. I mean, this is like. Oh. Uh, now the truth nice. comes out. No, no, nice, no. Grant. Uh huh. Uh huh. Well, we'll be waiting. We'll be waiting. <laughs> hey, Google, remind me in eight months. Something. Something. <laughs> <laughs> Baby shower. <laughs> Oh, nice. Good. Is she still sitting in your lap? Uh, no, that was just last week. She's on the bed playing with some putty. You got my Google going off in here, bud. <laughs> Look, I cannot verify your voice. I'm like, shut up, Google. It ain't me. Uh, it's still going. Hey, Google, order 800 pounds of ramen. Confirm order. <laughs> hey, order 1,200 pounds of thermite. 
Listen, they're just a little retarded, Google. It's okay. We're all having fun here. <laughs> Excuse us. We're great. You know, one advantage to no camera is, is I can smoke what I want and Google doesn't care. See? There you go. Sure. Whatever you want to do, man. <laughs> um, uh, so this weekend, uh, I tried to get everything done and got almost nothing done. But that's how it goes sometimes. Um it goes. I was supposed to do like another uh, kind of like 20 by 23 project stop where I like I do like a property walkthrough and an interview and help them out with something. But, you know, I, I messed up the schedule trying to do it after a nap. And it's just like like a like a nap for my kid and just didn't what wasn't happening. And so I think I'm going to try again next weekend. That's it. So, Yeah. So I just want to come share that with y'all. I don't know anything about communication, so I'm gonna leave y'all to it. Y'all have a good show, and take care. Yeah. Wait, you're actually dipping out? No. Yeah. No, no yeah, stick no. around. Hang no, on. Hang on. You I don't mean, know. You, can... you might have something you don't no, no, know yet. You can ask you questions. You can like ask talking. Questions. Uh, yeah. I, I'm a very good talker, but like ham radio oh, we know. and stuff like that. Okay, <laughs> that's all we're doing. Like. I'm not trying to date any of these guys. We're just hanging out, chilling, talking about chickens <laughs> yeah. and shit. You know what I mean? It's like, you know. Get to know me first. Out. Grant, you can you can stay or you can go, man. It's I, feel, I feel like I'm being pressured into staying. You are. Yes, You're I'm absolutely pressured. being pressured into staying. <laughs> hey, like, until, until you make us no, mad yes. and we kick you out. <laughs> uh, hold on. Let me go cut on one of your videos real quick. <laughs> All right. Um, so one thing. This has been a weird week, right? Like we've had like five consecutive weird weeks in a row, right? Something like that. So like there's that train derailment in Ohio. Only five. So that's weird. Do yeah, that, right? <laughs> Don't forget talking, Austin like, and, uh, in Texas there All were the... two of them too. Yeah. Yep. Wow. Uh, so I didn't know that. The yep. But they're not talking about it on the news. You talking about balloons? Chemical. One of them is a uh, real bad chemical, chemical shit. Train, train derailment. Oh, yeah. Another what one. What you talking about balloons? There's been like eighteen of them everywhere. Yeah. I even UFOs over, shot right. down. I'm like, they're not chi- they're not Chinese uh, weather balloons when they're being shot down over China too. Why would they shoot down their own weather balloons? They probably would to cover their. Uh-huh. Not, uh, the, the sure. Hashtag, the hashtag Ohio Chernobyl is trending this evening. Yes. I love that. Ooh, I wow. love that so yeah. much. It's bad. Wow. It's really yeah, bad. And then I saw really like, bad. whoa, like so. If you look at where that train derailment is in relation to Philadelphia, and I was like, "Oh, whoa, they're rioting in Philadelphia," and then I was like, "Oh, wait, no, Philadelphia lost. Like that's why they're rioting, not not because like of anything important." <laughs> oh yeah, just football, <laughs> just football, just football. Yeah. I saw um, somebody on the uh, TikTok earlier that's like a hundred miles away and had to go outside, like full blown, like gas mask and everything. Oh, she was like, "I, I go outside, you can't breathe." Wow, uh, hundred miles uh, is too close to oh. that. The, but the air is safe to breathe, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Just like the show. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so uh I got an email from uh from a guy who was on the show a handful of times, uh Guy Alaska. He he he's not here, but I'll speak for him when he's he just replied snail mail real shit hitting the fan vetted and trustworthy runners next question (laughs) so that actually that is something i did not consider in all of this like uh all the possibilities of communication was just just the mail like i haven't either which i'm i'm glad he said something so we could actually cover that angle as well yeah um was that would that be something you guys would would do like would you be the mail runner you think? I mean, if I was getting paid, I wouldn't be the mail runner. I would send something via runner. Yeah. Why wouldn't you be the runner? Probably be horse here. I got other shit. Yeah, I don't want to target on my back. You got other shit to do. I got kids and shit, dogs and like plants and like no, fuck that. Some other guy, some twenty year old kid that ain't got no fucking yeah, Grant. Rock on. Hey, hey, me. I have plants. I have plants. I got get married. I got thousands of bulbs. <laughs> I got that, I got plans to take care of. That which I've already the, sold. Uh, the I've already uh, speaking of communication. I've already traded um, about six hundred dollars worth of bulbs for equal amounts parts of moonshine. Wow! Dang, dude, <laughs> is this for the? You're stocking up for the wedding? Uh, no, <laughs> just, <laughs> just a little bit of resale. 
pay off the father of the bride. <laughs> Just get him drunk, <laughs> then ask him <laughs> for permission. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I thought that was a that was an interesting that was an interesting comment. Mm-hmm. That could be a uh, uh, post apocalyptic <laughs> job for all these ultrathon runners. They need something to do. They like running a hundred miles plus a day. Like, That's here, true. Take this over there. Yeah. Just find like, a high school track team and just throw a satchel on them. Mm-hmm. Throw a, a satchel on them. No, we get a relay. Mm-hmm. Bunch of guys. A state to state relay. Yeah. So, but Christopher, so, but even like even like right ahead. now though, like if you if you've got messages that you want to give people. Now, like there's technology and all that. You can you know, secure chats and everything. But even if you wanted to send messages to someone now using the postal service, I mean, nobody's going to nobody's going to scan that. Nobody's going to hear what you're saying or see, read what you're saying. I have had mail uh, stolen at the post office. We got it back like years later. Uh, there was some lawsuit that they used our mail. So mm-hmm. it does happen. But if your letter looks normal, if it doesn't look out of place, it doesn't look like it might have money, it's just, just a right. letter. So you talk about your illegal one. drug deals over USPS. Yeah, that is not what I said. What we talking uh, about? What are we talking about? Talking illegal drug deals. Mail. Yeah, legal drug deals. Wink, wink. Oh, it's just insane. But, so I guess what what to to take both of your points would be that okay, maybe sometimes mail gets opened. Yeah, but can we just assume that all email is read by a third party? <laughs> yeah, we, we can just all agree. That exactly. our here's, here's our government and the Chinese on. government. Well, here's what we could agree on: pretty simply, is it's all logged and can be read and accessed at any point in time, even if it's not actually read. It's all logged. Correct. Yeah, so maybe not a at the time. Third party function holding. And now on that there's the AI, top. they might start uh, analyzing it. Who knows? Oh God! Mm-hmm. Now that would be something to put AI on analyzing all the logged emails from yeah. like twenty years. Holy yeah. shit! There's, no There's a movie about that. Eagle Eye. Oh, uh, oh is that with uh, Shia LaBeouf? Shia La- yeah, that yeah. one. Mm-hmm. That was bad. Mm-hmm. That was. That Dude, they touched that kid till he went crazy. That poor fucking kid. Damn, <laughs> fucking <laughs> messed him. I'm just saying he was wild. <laughs> He's wild. He's fucked up. <laughs> If anyone didn't notice, I brought in a wild card for tonight. Oh yeah, <laughs> love it. <laughs> uh, Christopher, so yeah. you also emailed me, and you wanted to do like a whole uh, TED talk. Um, sure. Can you can you can you cool. summarize it? Well, I uh, I'm no by, by no means an expert, but when we this subject came up, it's something I have thought put a lot of thought into. And I thought of uh, quite a few ways. I'm going to give a talk at this lo- local prepper uh, group that when I go to meet in April, and it's going to be on dirt cheap um, communications. Um, basically, you can meet about 80% of your needs <clears throat> with about uh, $30 worth of hardware and some tricks and some neat tricks, including one that's highly illegal. I'll tell you about it, but you know, you never want to do it unless like the grid's down and the police stop coming, you know, but um, you can set yourself up to where you're, you can have, you know, like 80% of your, your base is covered. You can listen to people uh, for many miles. You can get updates from your region, your city, your neighborhood. You can transmit out a few miles and you can even wake people, wake up people in your neighborhood to alert them. Hey, there's a problem, something going on. Uh, so, I know um, if you if you allow me to just talk, I'm just going to run through at, at a high level. Um, just hit hit the top uh, main topics, but I've got a PDF I'm going to put together, and I can link it. You can put it in the show notes for people if they want to download it and look at it and get you know a little more in depth on it. So yeah, what's the quick stuff? The quick stuff. Okay, so a lot of preppers will say you know the Beofang radio. It's cheap. It's reliable. Uh, I wouldn't go with that one for your first choice. Uh, if you're on just an absolute budget, the Bay of Fang's a little bit higher. You're going to have to not only get the radio, but you're going to get a few other uh, accessories that are really recommended. I would say before you do a Bay of Fang, there is a little $5 device called an RTL SDR. And I gave mine, uh, mine away, but this is similar. This is, a, this is an upgraded version. But they make these they are similar to this. It's $5.00. It plugs into your computer, and it is a wideband radio. It can tune um, 
they're they were built originally for European TV, but they can also tune uh, FM radio, CB radio, uh, FRS, GMRS, MERS, weather, military airplanes, and uh, just a wide range of, of antennas. So it's all done digitally through the internet. It's all done digitally through your computer. Is this the network. illegal thingy? No, I'll get to the illegal later. No, this oh, is. This one's perfectly legal. It is only receive only. It's a jack of all trades, but it is a master of none. So it's not great. So it has okay. So it's got an antenna on it. Okay. It it has an antenna jack, and the uh, the five dollar one comes with a um an uh, a TV antenna, a digital TV antenna, and and you just take the wire and you just you know just clip it. You can split out those two, and you can put your own wire antenna on it. And with um with with radio. Uh, all it cares about is that it is a long conductor. So you can run a wire up in a tree and, you know, it can receive quite a few signals. Um, there's no license required because you're not transmitting, but it's only receive only. So you're just going to be listening. Uh, it is, however, a good way to learn the basics and you get a decent range. Um, this week I pulled it out of the closet just to test some things. I was able to listen to uh cb radio chatter down the road who knows maybe five ten miles down the road and there is a ham radio repeater three miles away and i was listening to that tonight on my uh little five dollar radio so it just plugs into the computer the computer does a lot of the processing work but the, like the uh electronics and things are in the little little device so it's a way of uh, offloading what used to be built into a, a cabinet got pushed into software on your computer uh, and uh, so I, I uh, there's plenty of two. I'm I, I uh, I'm, I'm gonna in this PDF I'm making. There's plenty of uh, tutorials out there you can learn how to do it. I I, I didn't want to reinvent the wheel because there's just so many people who've already done that. Uh, there is a uh, manual, and uh, I put a link to a short video I recorded on cutting that antenna wire uh, to use your stock antenna to split out. You know, make your own um, antenna. So, like, for five bucks, I mean, it's a no-brainer. You get that, you install the software, you play around with it, you set up your frequencies so that you can just go in and I can now listen to the weather radio or the, the local ham repeater or CB radio or MERS, a bunch of different frequencies. That's a neat tool. Yeah, it is. And and, uh, and and like I said, it is cheap. It's not great at, at receiving, but a lot of that has to do with the kind of antenna. So you just string up a – I've got a, a wire up in my tree – and I was listening to it the other night, and I heard thunder. I said, okay, off it goes. <laughs> We're not doing that in lightning. So don't do that in lightning. Um, but uh, you can just string up. You take a, a fishing late weight, tie it to a fishing line, and I get, took a slingshot, or I could have had a fishing rod, and you sling that sucker up in the tree. And when it comes down, you then tie a, a wire to it, and you can haul that up into your tree. Gotcha. So you can get, you know, 20, 30 feet up in the air. Um, so that was the $5 one. And then I bought the upgraded version. It's uh, $30, $30 just for the base unit. It doesn't come with an antenna. So I bought the extra antenna package for another $10 or 40 bucks for a, uh, a better quality, not only better quality, but it also adds more frequency. So the, the, the $5 unit can go from 25 megahertz, which is like, uh, CB radio on up to the gigahertz range, so it's it's a decent chunk of rate of, of band, but this guy can go uh, way down to 500 kilohertz, which is like all of the ham band. You can just listen hmm. to every every ham frequency on this one. So it's I, I thought it was worth the extra. I had I bought two of them, and of course I gave one away, but uh, I, I was I thought it was worth the ex you know the extra few bucks to get an, a sec get the wider range, better quality. All right, so. Um, it would be like the uh, the post apocalyptic version of like a chat room lurker, like you're just you're just hearing everything. Yeah, but yeah, and, not and, contributing and anything. You're that's right, cool. right. And, I like and that. That's cool. I'm like uh, that. where I'm at out in the country. I'm not seeing or hearing any really thing much of all in interest that I really would need to transmit. I wouldn't be that useful, and so I do have some transmitters, but I just thought, well, right now. I'd rather spend that money on something other than a ham radio transmitter. And so I just picked up a receiver just to listen in, you know, the surrounding area. And uh, nice. so that's where I'm at. 
Um, if you are, and I was suggesting to my local group there, the, those guys, I said, um, you guys are within three, five miles of each other. You could really look at a CB radio uh, because CB is has requires no license, and you can get a handheld walkie for like fifteen bucks on eBay, or uh, a base unit for your that would plug into a car for twenty plus, and it's got a lot of power and it's got a lot of range up to fifteen miles, and like I said, there's no um, there's no license required. It's just not as sexy as ham radio, but you know, if you can call ham it, radio doesn't require a license to, and either in the shit hit the fan. If it's bad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. If it's, if it's, I've if had it's that bad conversation enough that the with... FCC is too preoccupied to come and, and uh, knock on your door. Then yeah. You can yeah. Use your... I had the conversation with some people that that's not a list I want to be on. <laughs> so understand and know how to use the, the, the radios and have the skill yeah. set, but yeah. Yeah. So um, CB radio is, is an excellent option. Um, it's good for listening because I was listening to some guys chatter and I thought, boy, if there were, you know, something really bad going on, there'd be all sorts of chatter about what this and what that is going on. So mm. that'd be a good one to, to pick up and listen to, even if you, you can you listen to it on the uh, RTL or you can, if you have a, a dedicated uh, CB radio. Um, but that's a good one. Uh, FRS is another one I have. We, we use these at our household. Their range is about a half a mile, uh, but you're, it's a good one to have uh, on hand, even if you only have one, because the, there's a high likelihood that someone around you will also have one. And so if there's any chance that you might coordinate with another person, there's a good chance they've already got one. So even if you had just one, like eight bucks on eBay used, and they're pretty durable, so you know, just a used one, is a good thing to have and just throw into the closet. I got a pair of cheap walkie talkies that I bought for like 50 bucks or whatever from Same. Cabela's just, just yeah. for hunting. Yeah. And they're probably that if they have 16 to 22 channels, like a little channel selector or a button. Yeah. Same yeah, then, then channel and sub channel. They're probably FRS. Mm -hmm. um, that's the license free one. There's a one called GMRS, which is related and you do need a license, but it's just, it's not an expensive license, but it, I just stick to the FRS because it's good enough. Um, but this one is by made by Beofeng, the same one company that makes the uh, the more respected, you know, uh, Prepper Ham Radio. And I, it's a little bit better. It cost, cost uh, thirteen dollars a unit, and it, it just got more features than the, the cheapy one you get on eBay. Um, mm. So it's yeah, I thought it was worth the extra spend on it. Uh, it's rechargeable. It's got a base. So it just sits on the base at all times. We don't have to think about it. You know, it's just ready to go. Um, what's that? Uh, keep I keep mine in a Faraday bag. Well, yeah, keep, keep, keep it in a Faraday bag. So what kind of shit hit the fan do you boys think's coming? Like, in the sense of like, <laughs> like there's always, so we got, what do we got? So Civil War. We got. Well, we don't get to decide what it looks like. We got other people. <laughs> so the Civil War, who breaks who first? I yeah. know we ain't all cracking at once. So, what state y'all think going down? And then, what do you think the response is going to be? And is it going to be our governors versus our feds? And we say and fuck them. Like, I'm trying to break it down in the sense of like, what what are the like? We have a lot of potential triggers, right? But out of 100 percent of the triggers, only like 20 percent are feasible in the sense of could happen, and some of them are kind of wild. Even though you know maybe, but like. So what do you boys chew on and think about? Because I'm in Florida, and I can see DeSantis telling people to get fucked, and that being a problem. <laughs> and I'm in Florida, and I, I'm not quite sure he would do that. I just will have he to already see. told the CDC. Uh, yeah. He already told the IRS. Uh, he already yeah. told the feds, DHS, if they come fucking with the parents, that he's you know going to have problems. Uh, IRS has to register for every person they come and bother here with the state to verify, and we can have backup attorneys represent us against them so in the cdc we all know what he told them you know so i mean what part wouldn't you see him kind of pushing back on that uh well i'll just keep it brief long story short i used to vote with Re republican and now i'm more independent and uh, libertarian and there's some things that republicans uh do that i really like and then there's some things that they do that i just don't know like they're not fully committed and uh yeah, what about I, I, DeSantis? I'm not yeah, DeSantis, about 
DeSantis has done a lot of things that I like, and I still don't know that I can fully trust him. So I'd have to see. But I, no, I definitely done a lot politician. of things I like. Still, yeah, he that's is. right, Jeremy. That's exactly what I was mm-hmm. thinking. Still a politician. Still a politician. No, I mean, even even the independent libertarians are still I'm politicians. I'm just wondering yeah. if he'll push back in a way against the feds. That that was the original question. Is like, mm. so DeSantis will push back against the feds, and he's already proven it in several different occasions. So in order for there to be a civil war, right? So the civil war happened before when states decided to leave. So that meant all of the militia in those states were uh, compelled to be on the team of said state they were in. When Lincoln was like, we're not going to leave. Screw you. They got into the disagreement. I'm trying to picture a scenario in which that might happen in any one of our states. The only ones that have a certain proclivity for that probably would be Texas here. Bill Lee's not strong enough in Tennessee. And I can't think of another governor. I don't think I don't think I trust Yunkin very well, but I don't think of another governor that's got the sack to do anything like stand up to them. So who does it? It's not going to be just regular people. I mean, because then you'll get turned into extremists and squash like roaches and that'll be the day. You know, I, man, that's kind of sad that we would have to rely on a governor to. I mean, I know, just, but when, that's just the real scenario. Don't. Yeah. Here we get, here we you, get Mimo, Mimo Ivy down here in Alabama. No, I, I think <laughs> it's, it's less about how it goes down um, because it could go down any of a dozen different ways. And I think my reaction is going to be the same. Um, if I can stay where I am, grow food. If I can't, get out, grow food somewhere else. Like, it doesn't matter if it's an alien invasion or a civil war or an asteroid impact or whatever. It's like, people got to eat or we're not going to be care, here you anymore. You take care of you so, and yeah. your family. Yeah. You're not local has more impact on you than than the, the, the federal and that's that's actually what i was going to bring to the table for the communications topic tonight is the, yeah uh, the more local aspect you know there's all the radios and the mesh networks and the you know whatever all the but, fun uh, technology yeah yeah um but there's also like developing a culture where people are stopping by hopefully to buy stuff and and support your efforts financially yeah. but uh um and also for socializing you know have people coming by regularly like build a real world network of people within a realistic walking distance um and you know i think in this rural area it's it's kind of obvious because we have one crossroads and like that would be the center of everything if if the grid went down and you know it'd be Old West times. I'd sell food there. People would meet there and exchange news and information. And um, yeah, just talk to people. Have them coming by. Get them involved yeah. in growing their own food. Um, I'm, we're going to use like a composting program to bring people by, dropping off buckets and picking up clean buckets, um, and have like a little free library out there and have a little. Um, we kind of want to get into like baked goods since that's covered under the cottage food laws. Yeah. Um, so do like a little farm stand slash compost drop slash free library slash whatever, you know, um, bulletin board maybe so people can advertise stuff, keep yeah. stuff in the neighborhood, resources in the neighborhood, um, stuff like that. I like bulletin boards. No, I think that's, that's a good. good way to, you know, just, do a throwback. Um, I think it, I think it's good to have like all the tools at your disposal too, right? Like all the cool mm-hmm. shit Christopher sure. is talking about. And then, but you know, Definitely. bulletin board. Yeah. Unless it unless it's windy, it's gonna stay there. Um, or get rained on, whatever. So yeah, I think we that's, haven't no, even I gotten think to the good. illegal one yet, and that 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 kind of <laughs> along that line. I'm waiting. Hit me with it. Bring it. Yeah, you want to go? I can. I'll skip ahead. Well, I was going to also say uh, mention things like um, uh, an uh, phone tree. You've heard, you may have heard of. It's where one person calls two, those two people call each call two. Sure. Those people, yeah. And that's a great way to set. You know, that mm. kind of works into the bulletin board model if we have some sort of um, phone. But you could also do that with. I know we have um, text message group group conversations. Uh, but group conversations depend on the data plan in your phone. And if that's 
down or if your signal is just too weak, you can also do a uh, text message phone, like a phone treat. So you text sure. two people and those two people text two people. Um, so yeah, those are very low tech. You know, it's not, it's not as sexy. It's not as cool. Um, uh, but uh, I get a list of several things and I'll just throw them into this PDF things you make uh, like mesh tastic. It's a, it's an inexpensive little Bluetooth device. You, you, your phone talks to it. It talks to another a mesh network within three, five miles. Good for groups. Um, it's like uh, 20 bucks a, a unit. Um, then there's some excellent. Christopher, do the illegal thing, please. I'll get to that. <laughs> I get to that. I'm, I'm, no, I had to, te- but, I had to yeah, tease you. So all I, the other stuff. Okay, let's I do had to the tease you thing. so I could keep you listening. Like falling asleep tease, like a. Uh, uh, you got to do those things because this is, that's that's cool and fun, but you got to do the 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 the, uh, the weather radio, man. You got to get a weather radio. You can't call yourself a prepper. And, weather radio, got it. It's in the and PDF. have a this tornado wake thing. not wake you up. So, all right, so here we go. Here's what's the what's the what's the illegal one. Okay, this is highly illegal. We're waiting on you to tell us. In every neighborhood, you have phone lines, coax, and power lines that go to every house. So I would propose you use those, if the grid is down and the police are not responding, use those as a neighborhood telegraph. You you go to your central box. Disconnect those wires from the main office. You have only the wires that go to each house. They all connect together. You get out of an old car. You you dig out some relays, some twelve volt relays. You take a twelve volt car battery. You take uh, the car horn. You take a few switches. You take some lights. You take some buzzers. And in each house, you get that wire that goes to every house. You use the relays and your switches to switch on the buzzer. And you can, during the daytime, daylight, when it's not an emergency, you can use the buzzer as Morse code, as like a party line. You, 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 you print out your Morse code sheets. And so there's cheat sheets. So everybody can butt, 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 butt. That buzzer, though, is le- just loud enough to wake everybody up in the middle of the night. So you, you get somebody coming in, you hit, you slam your that buzzer loud and, and long. And in addition, you have t- stolen a car uh, horn from under the you know the hood of a car and you're wired that into the system as well you switch it on at night so somebody comes and breaks into your house you slam the emergency button it buzzes all throughout the neighborhood and your the car horn is honking outside outside really loudly the people wake up they walk outside they hear the car horn and they all come to help you so i was going to draw a diagram and i'll do that and i'll put it into the pdf about how you might wire it but this is just a way to um, use these resources that are all around you uh, for communication. So you can basically have a, you know, three, five, eight, ten block uh, party line when there's still no power in the in the, in the neighborhood. So, of course, highly illegal. That's that's very MacGyver. Kind of <laughs> right. I was thinking it was like. Hey, so you could just like hack the Pentagon and then use their networking <laughs> stuff, and then like you know you can use their satellites and yeah. No, we're just gonna use we're just gonna use AT and T. Yep, yep, yep. So if I had only thirty dollars, I would definitely buy an RTL SDR. I would buy a, a a handheld CB radio, an FRS radio, and I would use apps and neighborhood telegraph. And oh, oh, there was another one. Um, an old cell phone. If you got an old cell phone. That still kind of works on battery. It's not activated. Throw it into your glove compartment. It can still dial nine one one. You can you can mm-hmm. you know you're you're out driving and your your cell phone is down. Pick up the other one. It can still dial nine one one. They'll all. Are we all assuming that them. emergency services are still operating or? This is all situations. You don't get yeah. to decide what the emergency looks like. It might be just your personal emergency. So you know your your phone dies and you're out and you got an emergency. You just go to the glove box and you pick out the mm. old cell phone. So sure. just make sure anyway, it's I'll, I'll throw, I'll throw that, uh, that list together and that PDF and give you a link on it. Awesome. Yeah. I had, uh, the only thing I really brought, like there's a, like, like Scott already kind of squashed it, like kind of like poo pooed it real quick. <laughs> it was, uh, was like a Bluetooth, like, like messaging app 
um one that i saw no i didn't like, mean to poo poo anything i know cool. i know i know you're just uh you're, it wouldn't work for me anyways and i don't think it'd work for you because we're too rural for like i mean we're just too far away to yeah, actually get anything out there if you've but... got you know we've got like one to five acre lots around here so a mesh network could definitely work you know if yeah you use did. a mesh tastic tastic uh 20 yeah, bucks yeah. A, per unit I think the one I was looking at was called Bridge Fee or Bridge Fi or Bridge of or I don't remember what it's called, but um, a few years ago I was looking into one called uh, I think Bear Tooth. Um mm. but that was that was a lot earlier in the in the technology. They're a lot cheaper now. Jeremy, in all your prepping videos that you've published, um mm -hmm. what kind of stuff have you got into? So I've got the you know the good old Baofang, Baofang, however you pronounce that Chinese word. Um, I've got several of those. We've got some of the, the cheap two-way radios, FRS radios. Um, and I think outside of that, I mean, it, it's like Scott said, community-based. You know, the, those those yeah. radios are for listening in for. <clears throat> I don't I don't anticipate long term communication with people if, if it gets to a, a, a true SHTF type situation. Yeah, right. um, it's going to be all very local and, you know, initially, you know, having people around you and being able to communicate with them is going to be key. But eventually all those batteries are going to die and you're not going to have a way to recharge them. And yeah, so what's the point That's in true. trying to to have this massive stockpile, you know, when within a year you're not it's going to all be useless yeah one thing you. uh it was like uh, what's that movie uh i think it's the new one planet of the apes or war with the planet of the apes or whatever where it's like they're still looking at pictures like on their ipad and the screen's got like a big old crack through it and i don't know if you've yeah, like, seen, <laughs> seen that yeah, one at all yeah. and like yeah still... that's it's a big like no nope, that battery's not working yeah it's it was kind of like an interesting thing like oh i mean some technology would still work but if they had like solar and whatever uh to recharge it but i mean like what if you if you have some massive emp or some cme that fries all electronics i mean even your yeah. solar panels are done you might right. have a few that work here and there but no i mean but, but this is all like sitting there assuming that nobody who's in charge of anything with like guns and power is going to try and put something together even right. if you know what I mean, and they're going. You mean scrap together uh, communication network? Well, yeah. I mean, like, so okay. So again, and, and yeah, it's going to fall to the state because they're the one with the systems. Not even that I want some of them to do it because some of them are just you know bastards. But I mean, that's just what's going to happen, right? You know, they're going to all get together and they're going to be like, "Oh, this is down. This is down. Well, what do we do to do this?" And they're going to decide, and we're going to watch the show that when it's like talking about all the things we're going to be communicating. Like, bottom line. Once they start like putting things back together, you're going to cooperate or they're going to handle you like, you know, however they feel the need if you're in their way. So, I mean, and that's really where it's at. So I that the guy that said the local flat out right in the community, that's going to be your strongest network. But even mm -hmm. then, whoever the leaders of that are, they're going to want to follow somebody else because it's a big, big world. And they understand that it's bigger than, you know, our neighborhood. So they're going to wonder what's going on and they're going to be scared. Now, us boys, we sit there, we prep, we prepare. But how many other level heads are going to be when that shit's going down? So if we're talking in the community, you're talking about communications, you're talking about wiring some stuff through houses. These folks going to look at you like you got three heads. They're going to be scared to death, bro. So it's like, so, I mean, it's a great plan because it means we're thinking in an engineering standpoint way. But I would challenge to just prepare yourself, mind, body, thoughts, just kind of on be a MacGyver. And when the problem comes, fucking solve it. You yeah, know, have, I mean, have all the tools in the toolbox. I bingo, like to say that, that we is. don't we don't get to decide what the the disaster looks like, and and maybe bingo. a situation in which uh, your your hand your illegal hand, uh, neighborhood telegraph is a bad idea, and there may be a situation what's a great idea. Just you know, just well, have maybe something in the we got internet, or we got localized internet, or like yeah. in Ukraine they only had yeah. Skynet or whatever the fuck that was, Skynet. right? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and so like, <laughs> God tell me that's all they had. But then yeah. that would be very controlled, right? Very tailored. It's only what's allowed through that system that you'd have information to. So in the 
in the entirety of this, I think of all the things in the entirety of like the aftermath. So, okay, so what's that mean? The aftermath? So you're talking three days, two weeks, three months, six months, one year, eighteen months. So, like, that's the way you kind of schedule those things out. And who's going to do what to get their shit together in that time? People are going to try and get some kind of localized communication going. It's bigger than what we're talking about. I mean, so it's like there's ways and then we got to watch out for that and really you got to work watch out for the control freaks in the area around you trying to control whatever the fuck you got so like these are the things you know uh i think of more on the scale of like i got survival but i mean i like to think of them 1860s boys you know they have power they have phone and plenty of them sons of bitches you know they they ate they did things you know we'll do that we'll figure that out right we're not we're not some of us I mean, some of the Gen Z and millennials are, but us Gen X boys, you know, <laughs> we're going to figure this out, right? We'll drag y'all through it. And it's like, I know we will, man, but it shit's going to hit the fan. But I practice a lot of faith over fear. I believe in, so like uh, Scott said, you know, like, grow shit, food. That's the plan. Food. I think that's the great food. Let's do that. All right. Who wants to roll the joint? So like we got the plan figured out. We're done with the stress on that. Let's just work towards that and get that goal set. Learn about how to grow the food, have how to have the food, how to how to give food away. Show, you know, start figuring out what food brings together as a people. You know, those are the things I'd be figured out. I'm not worried about calling who any nobody really fucking shit hits the fan. I'm worried about me, mine here, and everybody I can see in front of me that ain't trying to kill me. I love them as much as they love me. And that's how it goes, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love it. I think we should just start clapping. Uh, <laughs> well said. Uh, I do like I do like the the having options because you don't know what how like what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, what's going to come from it, kind of thing. Um, tools in the toolbox. Yep, tools in the toolbox. It's like bulletin board used for that. Uh, yep. Thirty thirty five dollar thing that plugs in your computer so you could listen in, see get news from. Town over, state over, across right. the country, whatever. Um, could listen in, see what's going on. Could just go down to your local like community center and just talk to your like meet your neighbors. Yeah, because um, I'm that, sure people would gather face there. Face to face, yeah. That face to face is hard to beat. That it's hard to beat. That's that. gold. That's, that's yeah. absolute gold. I think the uh, same philosophy applied to drugs is pretty good too. They're just tools in the toolbox. It's all about how you use them. <laughs> That's true. I mean, we all know, right? We we all saw the three hundred, right? All them Spartans, they went and got ten thousand Athenians to die for them, so they can take a break. You know, what I mean, there's sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. I don't know what to tell you, boys. Just find you some Athenians. That's all I'm saying. That's just what I'm saying. Well, that's where technology shines. Is is a called a force multiplier. You know, you you don't have to all always be face to face. You can save yourself a lot of labor by having a couple of cheap. FRS and you, hey, you go over there, you watch the back, and we're going to talk to each other over the radio. So, you know, it's it's force multipliers. Is if you've got the tools, the technology, and you got some way to recharge it, use it. You know, right. Yeah. So, um, man, I'm blanking. So, what? It was Christopher. You were at a plant thing this weekend. So, what? Yeah. What did? Uh, that was you building your community. Kind yeah. of expanding your bubble. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, I, I, myself, I'm a little bit uh, introverted about that subject in public. Uh, so it was good that you know she had her shirt on. I was concerned for her, uh, you know, being so open and, and out there about that. And, you know, we talk about opsec because and, you played uh, the gray man. Yeah, played the gray man. Um, and you know, I don't want her to be attacked because someone remembers, hey, that's the person who said they're a prepper. That means they've probably got supplies. Uh, that would that would be awful. But, um, but if she didn't wear the shirt, you wouldn't have talked to her. She didn't wear the shirt. Yeah. So there's a weird there's a weird balance there that you got to strike somehow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which Scott, is how are you with it. have bullets? There's your balance. <laughs> I mean, that's really like uh, if you want to educate people because you love them and you feel like good at heart tell them that's what yeah. i would do every conversation i felt they was good or hard i just yeah. drop it in there same way the mormons do when they like have you heard the good news it's like have you heard the bad news shit's fitting to hit the fan here's what you can do to <laughs> save the day you know what i'm saying like fucking just, just reverse you're it the all. prepper evangelist delivered a good message <laughs> we are all going to die but there's <laughs> salvation in prepping 
right. There's, there's salvation in prepping. That's fucking perfect, dude. That is amazing. Scott, I'm curious how you are with your neighbors because uh, you said like the, the the acreages aren't 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 that big, but anytime you got a picture of your place posted, it just looks like you're in the middle of nowhere, like on your own. Yeah, um, we're most of the neighborhoods actually one acre lots. We're on two mm. acres, um, but it's like a hundred percent usable two acres. Nice. Um, you know, there's a lot of like five acre mountain lots up here that have less usable land than my two acre lot does. Um, just cause it's all steep and rocky and, and whatever. We just, the whole thing is a nice gentle slope pointed South, um, mm. which is really nice. I'll buy a five acre prop, uh, parcel next to you and just get one of those like concrete saws and just start cutting into the mountain. I'm building us a bunker. Ah, nice. Now, I've got a lot of good plans for terrain like that. There's still a lot that can be done. Um, you know, that's that's kind of my whole big thing. And one of the reasons I moved up here is uh, we got to start changing our definitions a little bit, what it means to have arable land and um, where things might be possible to grow um we have a lot of tricks we're clever little monkeys with thumbs man we can we can grow fruit at 8500 feet and we can grow bananas at 8500 feet and i can feed a self-sustaining colony on mars because we're tool users like it's awesome (laughs) this whole concept of like arable (laughs) land and oh we don't have enough land to feed the planet the way you want it's like no we got way more than enough I'd love to see a, a vibrant, green, lush world with 30 billion people in it. Um, or, yeah, <laughs> 30 billion. Well, why not? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't not, think if, that's sustainable living. I, don't I mean, think you can do much it at all. Yeah, no, I get it's all like an engineering problem, but man, 30 billion. No, it's a lifestyle. It's a, it's a right balance now. issue. Well, at nine billion right now, you can fit them all in Texas, right? You can fit all the fucking planet in Texas. So, I mean, you're talking 30, so 30 like, billion, really. That's all side. of in America. Think of the whole world that's left. I mean, you can distribute that proportionately correctly. And like you said, we and they're lying to us. And you can tell that when one man can take a one acre property, right, and produce enough food to take to market and feed his family, you can't mm-hmm. fucking tell me we can we're we're going to starve to death. No, we're stupid. That's how that works. We're not going to starve. We're stupid. Mm-hmm. So we're like, we in, uh, the right things, you know, and so at least like, we want to build a, a mile long. Oh, uh, yeah. The, fucking, the dude, line blocks, that, the coffin, yeah. the coffin living. That's what that yeah. is, right? That's a great big coffin. You can fit a lot of people in, right? That's what it looks yeah, but like. It's, it's sustainable. Oh, BS. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. Sustain my sack. You just get some lamb, <laughs> some goats, and some chickens, and some rabbits, and like, and that's what you get. You know, fish, fish mm-hmm. are sustainable, right? You get you one of them cubes with the water. You can have you a hundred tilapia in there, dude. That takes a long time to eat a hundred tilapia. I mean, you might not like fish when it's over, but it takes you a long time, right? But you won't and die. Then, and you won't starve. Bingo, right? If you go right, so. pair, pair that with an aquaponic system and boom, yeah, that's what I'm go. saying, right? Mm-hmm. So you get the fish, you get the rabbit, you get the chicken. That means you get mm-hmm. all the easy fats. You get the good fat, you get the meat, right? You don't have any overhead, really. The chickens, the shit feeds the fish. The fish feed the plant. The plant feed the rabbit. Rabbit feed the garden. This is how that shit works. Garden feed the chicken. That's literally how it works, and it's a functioning system. And, you and just all of that feeds you. That. Right, that's it. That's I mean, literally, and you just mm-hmm. build off that. Use your composting system, commingle with uh, your, of course, garden scraps to feed your chickens. And then chicken shit is what the fucking fish will eat, which is full of its own nutrient base, which poops out more nutrients. I mean, it's just a self-sustaining cycle. So get that going and fuck the world, man. Get you some ammo, get you a woman, get you some kids. And that's all you need, man. That's all a man really needs in life. Problems <laughs> solved. Bingo, baby. That's it. He's got it yeah, all wars, out. War's over. That's what it. War? I mean, they can go kill each other. I don't give a fuck. Leave me alone. <laughs> One thing I did forget to share the uh, the guy that I had out last month for a property evaluation um, came out yesterday, so we could hash out a few other ideas that he had for the property to be more um, efficient. efficient. Yeah, so mm. so we're probably going to rearrange pretty much everything. So mm. I got a love hate relationship with that word efficiency. 
Yeah. <laughs> no kidding, bro. If you're looking to on, live on Mars, uh, we got to be efficient about it, right? On small scales, it's a, a wonderful thing, but it can very easily be taken way too far and uh, start creating anti-human systems in the name of efficiency. Sure. What's an anti-human system? What's that mean? Um, just, you know, uh, something that, you know, when I grew up, uh, the picture in my head when the word farmer was said was, uh, my overweight uncle sitting on a combine for <laughs> 12 hours a day. Uh, what are you folks are doing today? <laughs> depressed and popping pain pills and muscle relaxers and just miserable and hating life, you know, and that's not been my experience with farming at all. My experience with farming has been like getting my hands dirty and and becoming a part of natural systems and a manager of natural systems and playing you know, the dirt something that yeah it's it's life mm -hmm. and when we when we focus on efficiency above all else it takes away the connection aspect that i feel is essential to uh doing it in a more sustainable way it divorces the love and makes it walmart fucks it all up <laughs> Look, I, I say what I, I'm sorry. I say your what face, no, 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 no. Well, that's I saw your face when, when he said that. I love it. I um, I almost spit my water out. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> and we all saw it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I almost uh, I almost had milk come out my nose. Well, sorry, <laughs> I did have milk come out my nose over the weekend. Man, I do not. What was it? This is just a total aside because I think we're we're about to wrap up. But like. I was trying to get my kid down for a nap this weekend and uh i had him like you know use the toilet and then you know go take a nap well he you know he's on the toilet he's butt naked and he comes i i, I go to his room to like kind of like you know grab his pajamas or whatever i don't remember what i was doing he comes flying in just butt naked and just does like five quick really like quick rolls across his bed i mean it was like it was so fast and i just like it was the funniest thing i had uh i just drinking like like a milkshake or something like that like a protein shake and it was like coming out my nose and it was burning it was hilarious kids are riot it's funny it's great dude kids are fire they made me the better kids are fire yeah, no, That's they're great. Dude. I got like five of them, and all of them are different, right? And all of them have their own little uniqueness. And you had to like learn to negotiate with each one differently because they all, you know, you had to touch them each one in their mind and heart and figure it out with them when they was pissed. So it's like this <laughs> wild what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Uh, all right, let's. What what didn't we cover that uh, that you guys wanted to cover? Anything? I don't nope. know. It was fun. <laughs> it was yeah. fun. <laughs> this is this is good. This is great. Uh, all right, Scott, do I have you? To do? What nope. I have Scott Miller. Different Scott. I was gonna say, uh, plug your stuff. Uh, well, whatever. Just come play on Twitter. <laughs> it's fun. That's my oh, handle. Yeah, tell yeah, stuff. Scott. <laughs> you tell him, bro. That's it, baby. I'll have sure. stuff at some Scott, point, but it's got it. Little not, go. not now. We're going to start selling stuff this year and um, yeah, it'll be great. Yeah. You messaged me about uh, starting a, starting a website, starting a online shop. Oh, you know so. what? I do have one thing I'd like to mention real quick. Yeah. Um, I got a solid plan for this place. Uh, I could do it a lot faster uh, if I found the right business partner. I want an employee. I want a partner. Um, we have the property. Like, we're ready to go. We've laid a great foundation. Um, if there's a, uh, you know, anarchist or other doesn't give a fuck variety of regenerative farmer out there uh, who can't afford their own place, like, hit me up. Send me a DM. Let's uh, talk about some shit. Hey, Scott, okay. I got a buddy in Colorado named Johnny, and he used to grow a fuck ton of weed, but he's uh, we're looking to get nice, into kind of that world. Yeah, he, he might get holler at you, man. I'll holler at him on Twitter, tell him to give you a shout out. Yeah, right on. Thanks. All right, that's a, he's a great dude, man. Fantastic guy. Awesome. 
Let us know if, if something comes out of that. I want I want to know if we're making connections here. Yeah, this this is the year for it. I'm uh, I'm I'm kind of giving up on my short list of of dream partnerships and uh, starting to cast a bit of a wider net. So it, it'll happen. It'll happen. Christopher, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm working on a, a coop door opener with phone notifications called Secure Coop. You can get on the uh, uh, the coupon below, Farm Harp Life Rocks, and you can get a discount. And um, I'm working on it now, uh, just about to enter into beta phase. Uh, get to the website. There is an ebook there. Get on my mailing list to get you notifications when it's ready. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, I, I work for a uh, Fortune 50 financial company, and I work in their IT department. And I have applied many of the same principles that we use with uh, the multi-billion dollar servers down to the chicken coop level to keep your coop secure, no, get your notifications if there's some kind of an issue that comes up. Um, the first one is a door opener, but following that, we'll do all sorts of things like uh, motion alarms and lights and cameras, things that keep uh, the backyard secure all across the, the board. So working on a, basically a whole farm, secure farm suite. Anyway, uh, hit the website, securecoop.com. Awesome. I can't. Looking forward to it. Yeah. One of these days. I know. Chicken Whisperer. Oh, yeah. I'm on Twitter at my rooster wisdom. I talk enormous amount of shit, so you never know what I might say. I've been kind of laid off on it. For a <laughs> I'll be back shortly. Hey, Chris. I, yeah. You know why you was talking about that? It, uh, one occurred to me about that. You know what? I would I would look towards uh an adapter that fits on that pre-existing automatic coupe opener yeah. that you can uh, just plug into it. The very first just, one. Yeah, the yeah. very first secure coupe is going to have no motor. It's only a sensor adapts to an existing coupe opener. That's fucking and then the genius. next one will have a motor. So Good I can job, dude. I can sell it to anybody who already has a coupe door opener, uh, but they want to be notified. So. Yeah, hurry up, because that's dope. That's a smart thought. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go yeah. ahead, Jerry. Carefully, yeah. somebody may steal it. Oh, <laughs> If they steal oh, no, it, this I got point, as long as it's phone taken phone. me to get it ready, if they steal it and make it work, I'd just be impressed. I mean, I heard that. <laughs> I heard that. All right, Jeremy. Uh, yeah, do we like donuts on TikTok and Instagram? Homesteading, chickens, prepping. No shirts. Life. Hmm. No shirts. No more shirts. Eh, not really no doing shirts. that anymore. All gone. We've yeah. we still got some, but yeah. Yeah, I don't wear shirts either. Fuck them. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, that is true. Overrated. He's not lying. He just wears overalls. That's that's oh, not a lie. Nice. That's great. Uh, uh, although although I'm like this close to getting rid of the TikTok page. What? We'll we'll, we'll talk about that in just 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 one yeah. second. All right. Uh, and I'm at Rosa from Up Life. Check us out from MapLife.com. Uh, thanks guys for being here, and thanks everybody for watching. Next week, we're probably talking about energy. Same collapse thing with energy. Bye. Nice.